man that buys an old car quickly uncovers a chilling item left in the passenger seat. There's nothing like the thrill of buying a new car, and even if it's used, hey, it's still new to you. Sure, it'll take some time to air out the smells of the previous owner, but you can bet that as soon as you drive off the lot, that car is all yours. Well, most of the time you can. When one Georgia man found a listing online for a highly sought-after vintage car, he immediately hit the road, hoping to add it to his collection. However, as soon as he opened the door, he discovered that the original owner left behind a chilling item that was impossible to ignore. Coming from a family of auto shop owners, Zach Taylor was practically born loving cars. From those early days on, Zach began acquiring quite the collection of automobiles. But he had his eyes on one in particular. Even with a garage jam-packed with collectible cars, there was one vehicle that had eluded Zach for most of his adult life – the 1968 Ford Mustang Fastback. And given the car's unique history, its lack of availability should come as no surprise. An updated version of the redesigned 1967 model, the 68 Mustang, became an American icon thanks to its role in the Steve McQueen classic Bullet. Car collectors were relentless in their pursuit of the legendary model. This made Zach's life difficult, but he wasn't willing to give up on his search. And in July of 2017, his determination finally paid off. Browsing Craigslist one afternoon, Zach stumbled upon a 68 Fastback for sale in nearby Franklin, North Carolina. Before he could talk himself out of it, Zach was already on the phone with the seller, who explained he listed the car for a friend who didn't have internet access. The intermediary then put Zach in touch with the actual seller, who invited him to North Carolina to check the vehicle out for himself. With childlike giddiness, Zach hopped in his car and began the two-hour drive to Franklin, all the while picturing what the Mustang would look like parked in his collection. Sure, the car would need a ton of TLC to restore it to its former glory, but Zach was willing to put in the extra work to make his dream a reality. When he finally arrived at the small North Carolina farm, Zach pulled up to an old barn where he found the Mustang waiting for him. There he met the car's owner, Bruce, who gave him a little more insight into its history. According to Bruce, the Mustang was originally owned by his lifelong friend, James, though it had been years since the car was in working condition. In fact, the Mustang had actually sat under a tree in the hot Florida sun for decades before Bruce got it. Sadly, James had passed away a few years prior, and with his family looking to sell the car, Bruce happily purchased it from them. Since then, the Mustang had sat untouched in the shady shelter of Bruce's barn. With such a unique story behind such a unique vehicle, Purchasing the car seemed like a no-brainer for Zach. He began looking the car over, and after finding the exterior in pretty decent shape, he decided to take a look inside. The interior was a little more worn than he'd expected, but with a little time and effort, this bad boy would shine up brand spanking new. But as he continued to examine the car, he noticed an unusual feature that certainly hadn't come factory installed. Resting in the passenger seat was a small mason jar filled with a strange white powder and labeled James. Puzzled, Zach turned to Bruce and asked what the peculiar object was. His response? That's James. That's right, James, or rather his ashes, had made the Mustang his post-mortem abode. Zach was completely shocked by the revelation, and even after the weight of Bruce's words had settled on him, the decision to buy the car or not was tougher. Ultimately, he decided not to buy the car. Believing this 68 Fastback to be a lost cause, Zach resumed his search though the very next morning Bruce rang him and casually spoke about his friendship with James. Over the next year, Bruce called Zach between 30 and 50 times to discuss the topic of his former best friend. Zach was a good sport about the whole thing, and by the time he received his last call from Bruce, he felt as though he'd known James his entire life, and so Zach decided to move past his reservations and purchase the car from Bruce, ashes and all. For just $7,000, Zach got a great deal on the car. Though as he began working on it, he realized the Mustang was a lot more beat down than it had looked. It was a tough decision, but in the end, Zach sold the car to a buyer he knew who would make James proud. That buyer turned out to be Colin Budden, owner of Corner Classics on the Isle of Wight off the coast of England. Budden and his team had successfully restored 25 vintage Mustangs over the years, and with a little elbow grease, he hoped to make James number 26. Budden began restoring the car for a client working to replace the Mustang's rusted body. And as for James? Well, his days of cruising were far from over. But this time around, 
James' ashes weren't going to sit in the passenger seat. They were going to become part of the car itself. Button hoped to incorporate the remains into the vehicle's chassis before the build was through, allowing James to continue to ride until the end of time. Yet, not all discoveries made after purchasing a used item turn out to be as morbid as a jar full of the previous owner's ashes. Zack wished he'd gotten a hand-me-down as lucrative as the one found by Lara Russo, Kelly Gausty, and Reese Workoven. As they settled into their new apartment, these three roommates knew they had tons of unpacking and chores to take care of, but none of them expected that one routine purchase would lead to the greatest discovery of their young lives. The trio resided in the charming, old-fashioned town of New Paltz, nestled in New York's Hudson Valley. Though the community made for a neat place to live, these friends weren't exactly surrounded by luxury. Lara, Kelly, and Reese were all either enrolled in college or recently graduated. Most of their income went toward rent and ramen, so any leftover cash had to be invested wisely. One thing they all agreed on was that their apartment desperately needed furniture. The twenty-somethings wandered into their local Salvation Army store and inspected their couch selection. They came across some really nice pieces that unfortunately wouldn't fit in their apartment. Only one would, and it was a doozy. So the roommates had no other choice but to lug home the oldest and ugliest couch that the store had to offer. Still, it was only 20 bucks, so they certainly found a bargain, even if it was unsightly. Lara, Reese, and Callie celebrated by sitting back on their new couch and watching some TV. Some doubts crept through their minds, however. One part of the couch was so uncomfortable, it almost felt like there was something inside of it. Inspired by this half-serious thought, the roommates began to search through their sofa. Most of its sections simply proved to be lumpy and misshapen, but then Reese froze. He'd found a thick envelope in one of the pillows. Callie and Lara tore apart the rest of the couch in a frenzy. Within a few seconds, they located a second envelope, and then another, and soon more. There were envelopes hiding throughout the couch. Their new sofa lay in pieces, but that didn't seem to matter. The roommates now had a stack of mysterious packages begging to be opened. Each of them peered inside one but had no idea how to react, or as Reese later put it, I almost peed. Were they seeing things? Each package contained rolls of bills inches thick. Practically every denomination was stuffed in there, from ones up to hundreds. It would take the roommates a while to count it all up. It was a serious bundle. Lara, Kelly, and Reese both laughed and cried while they counted the bills. Sure, they'd all found loose change between couch cushions before. This type of discovery, on the other hand, defied explanation. Altogether, the couch money added up to $41,000. The roomies chattered about how much rent it would cover. Reese mentioned buying his mom a car. Unfortunately, they discovered one final object that threatened to throw a wrench into their plans. A separate envelope, torn and battered as it was, held a bank deposit slip. The paper contained all sorts of personal information, including a full name presumably the owner of all that cash. The trio had a true dilemma on their hands. Although the money would really help them out, the friends agreed the right thing to do would be to return it, but first they had to see if they could track down the owner. Hoping they weren't throwing away the windfall of a lifetime, the roommates shared the bank information with the Salvation Army. Against all odds, the charity managed to track down the original owners. There was no backing out now. The next day, the new Pulsers drove out to the provided address. When they finally arrived, nobody liked what they saw. The house was totally run down. Multiple beware of dog signs hung on the fence. Who the kids wondered were they about to get involved with? Much to their relief, an old woman opened the door and welcomed them. Inside, she spent most of her days alone as her husband passed away and she retired from her florist shop. She claimed the money was hers, but she'd completely forgotten it was in the couch. Seeing her young visitors scratch their heads, she explained she grew up in a time when people couldn't trust banks. Instead of putting their life savings in an account, she and her husband stuffed their nest egg into the furniture until their kids donated it. In that moment, the roommates understood the pile of cash wasn't theirs to take. They returned the money to the elderly woman, who thanked them profusely. She felt so grateful, in fact, that she sprung a surprise on them. She allowed the roommates to keep $1,000 as a finder's fee. Though it paled in comparison to the total fortune, a cool grand wasn't a bad return on a $20 purchase. Naturally, they got to keep the sofa as well. But were they upset? Lara, Callie, and Reese insist their true reward was returning the retirement savings to the rightful owner. Most others would have spent all the cash or failed to find it at all, but these pals could rest easy, literally and figuratively, 
knowing they did the right thing. These friends aren't the only people who found something unexpected at a thrift store. Those who bought these items didn't realize at first just how much they were really worth, but when they did, 